So hello guys and welcome back to another graphics card centric video and today I'm gonna talk about how uh, I delete Fermi cards. Um, this is the third Fermi card that I saw deleted. Uh, actually I only did like 2.5 delits because um, there was one card, uh, my friend's GTX 560 Ti that just kind of yeah, didn't want its IHS anymore and it came loose and I just took it off and thought why not delete it. Um, so yeah, um, this is the third, uh, not the third, the second card that I intentionally did it, deleted like this. Um, the card is perfectly fine, everything uh, looks okay. I haven't tested it yet, but I wouldn't know what could be wrong with the card. Like, if a deal it fails, it should be pretty obvious. Um, so yeah, um, since I do have a 100% uh, success rate, um, like my GTX 580 Darius 2 it works perfectly fine. The 560 Ti ended up per working perfectly fine. This one looks just as good, and after this video, I'm gonna throw it in, and it would, it will very likely like 99.9% .9 it will also work perfectly fine if not I can just kill the lightning and I'm going to hate myself for it um, so yeah um, I'm not going to talk about how I deal it Fermi cards and um, yeah so basically the reason why I'm doing it is I've heard that some people were trying to delete the Fermi cards and absolutely wrecked them like completely destroying the die and uh, whatnot and since all my deleting attempts went like this with the die looking like a perfectly normal graphics card die just that there was this thing uh, above it a few minutes ago um, I'm not going to talk about how I deal it um, yeah how, how I deal it uh, Fermi cards and I also bothered to save the footage this time so I can just yeah, put the footage in and, and show you how it looks like. So, uh, first things first, why would you even bother to delete a Fermi card? Well, basically because if you don't delete them, they are just going to perform worse. They're going to run hover, they're going to overclock less well, and um, yeah, basically it's that. You just make them better cards by deleting them. Um, you uh, You take away this uh, layer of thermal interface material, you take away the layer of thermal paste that is below it and you just replace it by GPU thermal paste, then comes the heatsink. Um, and that actually improves temperatures by quite a lot. Not as much as uh, CPUs, if you put like liquid metal there, you can get up to 20 degrees out of it. Here it's like 7 to 10 degrees, I would say. So it's it's not a small bump, it's a pretty substantial bump, but it's not like the, the absolutely 20 degrees you can get over a CPU because uh, I'm not going to use liquid metal on this because, well, why use liquid metal if you can just leave the IHS off entirely and just put a cooler on here? Which brings me to the next topic. Uh, not all coolers, in fact, probably most coolers will not be compatible anymore if you remove the IHS entirely. You can just take the IHS off and put very good thermal paste under there, maybe even liquid metal, though I wouldn't advise it. Um, you can do that, you can just replace it, put the IHS back on, and the cooler is still going to work, but um, if you leave the IHS out entirely, yeah. oh, oops, your coolers will generally no longer work, and I'm going to demonstrate this right here. If we take the cooler and align it, so it's perfectly aligned, and if I push down on it a bit, you will see that there is no thermal paste contact between GPU and die because, well, you're missing this these uh, like 1.5 to 2 millimeters of IHS. Uh, so, <coughs> yeah, your stock cooler is probably no longer. Uh, no longer working after you do this so you're gonna have to either water cool the card uh, or use an aftermarket heatsink like a rage intake morpheus or a arctic accelero or something like that like if you take uh, a water block like this that's that's going to fit like 
even fits with the base plate on. Um, that's going to work perfectly fine. It's just the stock cooler will no longer work, so keep that in mind. If you don't have a replacement cooler, you will very likely end up just putting different thermal paste under there and then uh, leaving it. it. That also gives you an improvement so that that can be up to 5 degrees, more like 3, but it's not the substantial drop in temperatures that you get from removing the IHS entirely. So, um, yeah, where, where I was talking about liquid metal, uh, I can now tell you why I generally don't advise using it. Um, because, no camera, don't focus on yourself, focus on the... It focuses on its own reflection in the <laughs> GPU die. That's not what I want. Camera, come on. Show me. Yes, now. So you can see around the GPU, there are all of these little SMD uh, polymer capacitors and resistors and whatnot. And if you put liquid metal on a GPU and the liquid metal touches those SMDs, yeah, your chip is fried. Uh, you're probably gonna short like V-core to ground or something, and uh, your 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 chip's just dead. It is just dead. Like, d don't even bother. You're going to have a giant short. Uh, there's probably going to melt some stuff. Your GPU, like, the silicon itself might be fine, but the connection f from the silicon to everything else on the board will be completely destroyed. Um, so yeah, if you if you want to put liquid metal on there, just take uh, uh, yeah, just take an anti uh, a a non conductive coating and put it on there. Um, yeah, that's that's going to work. But generally, I like if you if you go to the length of putting liquid metal on it, you could just water cool it or put a custom air cooler on it and get about the same thing. So yeah, that's why I wouldn't advise you to put liquid metal on Fermi cards. Like other cards, yeah, because those can run with the stock heatsink, but uh, yeah, on here, like you could run it with the IHS and liquid metal, that's not gonna perform as well. And you could run it without the IHS and liquid metal, and at that point you're uh, using a custom cooling solution anyway, so you could just use thermal paste. So, um, but now the actually interesting part. So how do you delete these things? Um, basically, you need uh, three things. That is a screwdriver, something elongated that you can use to apply force or something, and then a uh, this is just a box cutting knife blade. And uh, yeah, I've used these for all the deleting attempts, and I'm going to demonstrate what I was doing. Basically, if the IJS is on, you still have a tiny little air gap that's just big enough to stick the blade right in. And if it's in like this, uh, I just take this like just like pen. Uh, I take the pen pull on there and then uh, you can't really see it like I, I take a screwdriver and bump it I give it little little loft tabs with it uh, and the blade is going to go in ever so slightly further it's going to cut through the um, yeah f through the uh, rubber whatever that stuff is and at some point it's going to be in enough that the complete uh, the entire seal of the IHS will break and it will just fly off um, so at this point I could uh, just show the footage uh, of how it looks like. Um, note to that also, y like if if you if you like hammer with a screwdriver on something on the car, the car is going to shift in whatever direction you're hammering into. So you have to fix it somehow. Um, the first card I just used uh, like heavy boxes with uh, tools in it uh, in in a workshop. Second time the edges came loose from itself, so I just pried that off. This time, uh, right here, the, where the footage is from, I just, um, yeah, I and I just went into the corridor and took like a, yeah, t took it took like there was a wall, there was a, uh, what's the word? Can't remember the word. There, there, there was something other, and I just put it in in there, and then. Um, the cards couldn't shift anymore. 
So I didn't have to uh, think about how the card will behave, so just hammered on there. So yeah, um, that's basically how I did it. Uh, and you definitely don't want to, to apply too much force because you could also just slip up and then, I don't know, maybe cut off that SMD capacitor there and then, then you have a problem because you have to solder it back on and if it breaks, well, yeah, that's a bad day. And, um, yeah, um, if you, like, depending on which card you have, it could also have taken the base plate off. On this card, I, li uh, I left it on. Um, but if your card has a base plate and you have, like, Issues getting the blade uh, in properly. Let's take the base plate off. Uh, that's gonna help. And um, yeah, so that's that's basically how you how, how I delete uh, Fermi cards. There are several m methods you can use out there. Some in involve heat guns or hair dryers. Some do not. My my does not. And um, yeah, I can't say anything about the success rates of the other methods, but like all the failures that I've heard of have to come from some of the methods. And this one isn't it. Like I uh, there's a 100% success rate. Everything went fine and it definitely didn't look like the CPU that my friend killed with however he tried <laughs> to delete that thing. Like CPUs are not that different from this. This is this is probably harder because this die is a lot bigger and there's probably more of the uh, the seal is probably stronger because there's just more surface area. So yeah, CPUs are pretty much the same thing. And uh, yeah, um, that's that's how I how I delete Fermi. And um, yeah, so if if you do want want to delete your card, go ahead and do it. Just keep in mind. Um, you can totally break your card. Like, y you can totally break your card. Be careful with it, be careful with the SMD polymers here around, be careful with anything else that could be on the card, like this one or this one here, or be careful that you don't cut into the PCB with with your blade, that would also be pretty bad. And yeah, also keep in mind that your stock cooler will probably no longer work. Um, liquid metal, in my mind, isn't really worth it. Yeah, just use a, a Morpheus uh, heat sink or just straight go to water cooling like this. Like, I'm I'm eventually going to make a video about how my water cooling loop works, uh, especially now where all the parts are there for for the water cooling loop that my friend and I are building together. Because you you don't have to pay several hundreds of dollars for EK blocks and whatnot, you can just like this water block is fifteen to twenty dollars. So, and I have two of those. Like this one is going to my friend, and the other one is in my loop. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and now I'm running out of things to say. Uh, so, I I just yeah. Like it's 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 just a short video. I'm just showing you how how I delete my Fermi cards. How you can do it uh, pretty easily. It actually is also pretty fast. Like I have the complete process on video. Uh, it's probably around a minute if maybe two so it's it's pretty fast it's pr pretty easy i would say um though there is of course risk involved risk being your entire graphics card so yeah but that's not really it i uh, don't have anything left to say so thank you for watching um thank you very much for your time i hope this video was interesting um i'm like the the channel has gained some activity over the time, which I'm, yeah, I'm I'm really happy about that. Uh, I was just thinking that I'm just throwing these videos out and no one really watches them except me, maybe a few months down the line. But people actually watch them. Uh, I get I get comments. Uh, someone commented that uh, they're actually learning something, and um, yeah, that that's pretty much what I wanted to do. I just want to share my enthusiasm about hardware and maybe go it a little further than most people with like. Yeah, like delivering cards and modding them, and yeah, I'm really happy that the that the channel is actually ch um, catching some, yeah, it's catching some, some momentum and uh, it's going somewhere actually. So um, I'm really happy about that, but I'm not gonna drag, drag the video out anymore. We are at pretty exactly 50 minutes, so yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye. 
So yeah, I just booted the card up and um, it works. Still works. Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the, the delete is now officially successful. So yeah, I, I'm, I just put the IJS back on by the way. So the, the, the cooling is not going to improve from this. I, I'll have to use that water block from the other GTX 580. Um, but yeah, right, right now I can't be bothered to do that. So that's why the hot stock heat sinks on there for now. But it does work. Um, still works. So yeah. <laughs>